Hi, and welcome back to the Sure UK Whiteboard Sessions. Today's topic is the difference in sound between analog and digital wireless systems. And when I was asked to talk about this subject, I think it quickly became apparent that this is something that evokes emotion, can be very subjective, and we could probably sit here all day for the next eight hours discussing the benefits, the pros and cons of analog versus digital. So I think to keep this somewhat concise and to get through what we need to get through, there's a couple of things we should bear in mind. And I think for the purposes of the video today, um, I think what I'd like to do is compare a comparative high-end uh, analog wireless system with an equivalent high-end digital wireless system. I think if we didn't do this, we could quite easily take a high-end analog system you know, and a lower to mid-tier digital system and quite quickly show that maybe the opposite is true. But since we all want to believe that digital systems are better, I think we can point out a couple of things uh, that might uh, uh, prove us into the right direction. So, a couple of things before we start. We'll take analog on this side and digital over on this side. Let's remember that we're talking about wireless microphones. So, from a radio frequency modulation perspective, an analog system has an ever modulating RF carrier, whereas a digital system is a series of zeros or ones. In a previous session, we went into some detail about how these various modulation schemes work. And if there's one thing to remember from it is that in an analog system, the amount of modulation is always directly dependent on how much audio signal we have. So if I talk quiet versus me talking noticeably louder, this signal would modulate either more or less, and again, directly related to the amount of input signal. Whereas on a digital system, we are always modulating in discrete steps. Another thing to bear in mind when we're comparing analog versus digital wireless systems really is what was the application that the system was designed for in the first place. For the purposes of the video today, again, we'll, we'll assume that we are in more of a live performance scenario where we may have uh, instruments and in particular loud dynamic sources. So it could be somebody singing, for instance. All analog systems utilize what is called a compander there are some inherent uh, limitations in analog modulation schemes. Because of some of these limitations, all analog systems utilize a form of compression. Digital wireless systems do not have a compander, and one of the instant benefits of this is that we get a natural reproduction of the audio at the receiver end as compared to what we might have an uh, on an analog system. The various companding schemes really, again, come down to what the source is. So you'd be unlikely to hear a compander, especially with speech, whereas something with a lot of high frequency content and high dynamic range, which could be, for instance, an electric guitar um, or a bass guitar as well with a lot of low frequency content, some of this companding may be audible. So one of the first differences you'll hear with the digital system is that we have a far more natural sound um, to these systems. So we would have, for instance, a 20 to 20 frequency response. So take again the example of a bass guitar. Some of those low notes would really be natural as to how we would expect it to sound, for instance, with a cable. Some of that reproduction, that natural reproduction of what a digital system would give us won't necessarily be audible uh, or as, as well reproduced on an analog system as they would on a digital system. The last thing between analog and digital systems that we can really compare that has a rather direct impact on the audio quality is the inherent ability of a digital system to have a far better carrier to noise ratio than an analog system would, and in particularly in high and high uh, uh, harsh RF uh, environments. So let's draw this out here you should see what I mean. So this here is our RF noise for, which for instance could be down at minus 100 dBm, so nice and clean. And um, we have an analog radio carrier here, and um, as this transmitter moves further and further away from the receiver, for instance, the amount of strength that the receiver sees would degrade, and ultimately the strength of this carrier would get closer and closer to this noise floor point. As an analog carrier degrades in its uh, received strength home from a receiver point of view, we would start hearing some of this noise floor creeping into the audio signal. So an analog carrier, when it's close to the noise floor and the carrier to noise ratio isn't great, we start to hear some of those artifacts bleeding into the audio. And the more of those carriers you have, or wireless microphones you have, the larger that noise would be. 
Whereas in comparison, if we had a digital radio microphone, as this digital carrier um, weakens in strength when the transmitter goes further and further away from the receiver, we retain a perfect audio all the way down to the last points of the noise floor until we actually hit the noise floor and the bitstream disappears. Once the bitstream disappears, we lose all of our audio. So the trade-offs are quite clear to see is that the carrier itself, from an analog perspective, as we get close to the noise floor, some of the noise creeps into the uh, carrier. In a digital system, we have perfect audio all the way up until the noise floor, but once we hit this point, it all disappears. So in summary, it really is difficult to draw some concrete conclusions about the difference in sound between analog or digital, but as we explained in the beginning, if we're comparing like-for-like -like systems, a high-end analog system with a high-end digital system and a similar source, um, which we described in this instance as per, uh, something perhaps in the uh, live uh, performance area, there's a couple of things that we can draw. Digital systems do not have a compander. Um, they also have a wide frequency response. The two of those really combine to typically give digital systems a more open and natural sound, especially in low frequencies and high frequencies. So anything like a bass guitar or an electric guitar with plenty of high frequency content, typically you get a more natural reproduction of that source. And lastly, digital systems exhibit cleaner audio in bad carrier to noise ratio environments. So those harsh RF environments, as the carrier drops close to the noise floor, digital systems are able to better reproduce the original audio than analog systems are. If you want to know more about a variety of subjects, we do run a series of classes all under the Shure Audio Institute. For more information on these, please uh, visit the website below. Thank you very much.